Welcome everyone, it's your favorite bard, Korak the Bard, and before I introduce you to today's douchebag of the hour, I'd like to regale you with a tale of a young family member of mine who was recently potty trained. To celebrate his first successful go on the big boy toy toy, he emerged naked as a jaybird out of the bathroom, so proud of the job he did that he began jumping about the living room as his little pee-pee jiggled to and fro. So giddy was he in his happy little pee-pee dance that he began to urinate once again and happily sprayed little droplets of piss all over the living room, giggling like a little baby supervillain as he did so. It is this image I have conjured in your brain that I'd like you to hold on to while I introduce you to... Jessa Hyas Nathan! Jessa Hyas Nathan, and that is the last time I will correctly pronounce his name on purpose, has some very strong opinions about abortion and atheism. Alright guys, I keep saying the same things over and over and over again. My hands are hurting. My, my like fingers are starting to hurt from typing so much because there's like a million of you saying the exact same thing over and over and over again so i just feel like i should just make a video that way you could just hear all my arguments in one go awesome possum i love a one-stop shop for all of my ill-informed opinions apparently men have been getting short shrift in the abortion debate lay it on me chin strap uh, you guys are saying that men don't have a say in this, right? That's like a thing you guys have been saying. Oh, men, because you're a guy, because you have a penis. You don't have a vagina. You can't say anything. All right, look, before we go any further, just a quick note of advice from me to you, Jeheshua No Nuts. Don't pitch your voice any higher because every dog in your neighborhood is currently running in circles and it's freaking out your neighbors. I'm assuming by your facial hair that your balls have dropped. Hopefully, someday, your voice will catch up. Until then, please don't go falsetto because it sounds <laughs> rough. Uh, uh, waka waka. Listen, listen, listen. You need men to make babies. So, because of that, we have a say in this. It's my child. It's my DNA. You can't tell me that I don't have a say in it because it's literally my child. <laughs> Your child. Your child. Oh, that's sweet. Look, I have good news for you, Jehoshaphat No Strap On. Just show this video to anyone you're interested in, and that will make it very easy for you to hold to your creed of never having an abortion, because you, my friend, are never, never getting, getting laid. laid. Yeah, 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 yeah. And abstinence is a 100% guarantee of preventing abortions. Although being an incel does increase your chances of becoming a school shooter, so if I were you, I'd get well acquainted with Pornhub to ease that tension. Not to mention, the sperm donor squeezes off around, and then it's the sperm recipient who undergoes a massive body transformation over the course of nine months, during which she can literally fucking die. And if you think your dipshit ass has any claim to that because you managed to eke out an orgasm even though the sight of a vagina sends you running for the hills, you don't know the first thing about bodily autonomy. No, no, no. As men, we have a say in this. We have to stand up and say, look, stop murdering our children. You know, that's just what the good people of Texas said when they outlawed abortion, even including cases of rape. So fortunately for Jim Bob Netanyahu here, in the U.S., we can see in real time what happens when we don't allow women to get abortions and they have to keep their filthy legs closed or face the consequences. Well... Just like clockwork, outlawing abortion didn't protect any innocent women. It just gave rapists a license to choose their broodmare victims. You fucking shit-eating, grin-wearing, narrow-minded, short-sighted, cheap, lying, no-good, rotten, four-flushing, low-life, snake-licking, dirt-eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood... Sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, misogynist, degenerate, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lip, shit kicking, stinky, horseman, horse smelling, motherfucker, you worm headed sack of monkey shit, you warthog faced buffoon. Where's the Tylenol? And you're saying oh, it's a fetus, it's an embryo, it's a clump of cells, it's not a real human. That's dehumanization. When you take away a human's value, is dehumanization. You're dehumanizing it. WRONG! 
So correctly labeling something at its stage of development, whether it be a blastocyst, embryo, fetus, etc., is dehumanizing. <laughs> Check this out. The same way that they would dehumanize slaves and say that, oh, they're not, they're just property. Oh boy, can you tell he's doing this unscripted? When you say it's a fetus, a zygote, an embryo, whatever you want to say, it's still a human. It's, it's, it's just in the developmental process, right? It's like a teenager, it's not a full grown adult, but it's still a human, right? Just like how we call a teenager a teenager so we can know at what stage of development it's in. Like I can know, okay, if it's a teenager, it's probably going through th puberty. It's probably not as tall as other humans. Like I could, there's characteristics. It's the same thing with a zygote or an embryo. Like it's a human in development. We give it that label so we can know the characteristics for its development. Does that make sense? Like it's still a human. It's just a human in development like a toddler is still a human it's just developing you right if we're going to argue that because it's not a human because it's a fetus you could also make the argument that a toddler is not a human because it's not an adult wrong again no dipshit an embryo blastocyst zygote fetus newborn toddler adolescent and adult are all descriptive stages of human development Calling a fetus a fetus isn't dehumanizing, but it isn't a baby until it's born. You know why? Because it doesn't have a fucking birth certificate until then. The government doesn't recognize it until it's born. The God of the Bible doesn't recognize it until it's born. Absentee fathers don't have to pay child support until it's born. You can't claim it as a dependent until it's born. You don't celebrate Conception Day, you celebrate your birthday. Literally nothing happens legally and materially until this fucking child starts living on the outside of its womb the same way a chicken isn't a chicken until it's fucking hatched. Until then, it's a blastocyst, an embryo, a fetus. These are not dehumanizing tactics of the woke mob. These are biological terms for human development. And until the fetus is born, it is not a human baby and it is not subject to human baby rights and protections. If that bothers you, petition your fucking government or pray to your fucking deity. In the meantime, your fucking government has overturned Roe v. Wade, which I imagine would delight someone like you, but I would be remiss if I didn't inform you that it was Roe that provided protections for the fetus in the third trimester if it were viable, and now thanks to Republican religious zealotry, that protection has now been removed and also caused many would-be mothers to face life-threatening consequences in what should be an ordinary and mundane course of health care. But what does it matter as long as a 10-year-old rape victim is forced to carry their rapist pregnancy to term just as the murderous God of the Bible intended? The thing is that you guys can't be consistent with your argument. You can't, like, your thinking is not consistent. You can apply it sometimes and then, oh, wait, but not here. Okay, but there, yeah, like, that's the issue with your morals. You have nothing to stand on because you're atheist. And I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but atheists can't have objective morality. Like, they really can't. Jossie Nostradamus, just shy of nothing here, thinks I need objective morality from his God. Presumably the God of the Bible, who puts a pregnant woman's worth at 50 shekels, and herein lies the problem. No woman owes you a fucking thing, you fucking jerk off. Even if you manage to you jerk off in her, your semen gives you 0% ownership over what she does with her body. So maybe jerk off into a sock instead of a vagina. Jerk off. They like some things are oh what what defines morality ask ask any atheist what defines morality oh the society you live in defines morality that's bs because if you live in nazi germany then murdering jews is a good thing <laughs> thank you godwin's law and no, society doesn't define morality. I've never said that, and I don't know an atheist who has. If that were true, then living in biblical society would mean that purchasing your slaves and rape victims was morally permissible, according to your backwards-ass, genocidal, piece-of-goat-shit, god-of-the-ox-ass-smelling Bible. That, that's why we can't have atheists, like, running things, because then this stuff happens, right? as opposed to the very stable religious leaders around the world in positions of power who openly call for genocide, brutality, Armageddon, space lasers, blood magic. Yes, these are the people who should be calling the shots. 
not folks who rely on reason, logic, and evidence. What we need is some good old-fashioned superstition, misogyny, and revival of the Dark Ages. Um, anyways, uh, the other argument uh, is that I'm not a guy, or that I'm a guy, so I have no say. It's not a baby. You guys say my body, my choice. The baby is not part of your body. Look, from one professional to, uh, well, to you, uh, maybe write down what you intend to say to avoid looking like an idiot. Some people are good at improv. Some people just need a few cue cards to wing it. And some, well, some are just too lazy to be arsed to even edit out the parts that make them look unprepared and fucking moronic. Not only have you wasted your audience's time with your unprofessional presentation, but now I'm taking time to critique it, which has exponentially turned this waste of time into a goddamned tragedy. You're the guy that's holding the door on the subway, and now I'm the guy screaming at you to let the fucking subway door close, and now everyone's looking at me like I'm the asshole. Asshole! I know it's crazy, but it's actually a baby which means that it's completely different and it has its own body so it has the right to live if it was part of your body then sure maybe you could kill it but it's not it just happens to be located in your body you're getting there a fetus is located inside a pregnant woman's body and it won't survive without utilizing her body's nutrients and resources kind of like a parasite now, I know that's going to make you shudder in your snowflake snow boots and say, How dare you compare a person's human baby child to a parasite? But look, a parasite depends on its host, and a host can choose to sever a connection with its parasite. Well, how did this particular parasite get here? Could have been through consensual sex, could have been through rape, incest, assault, ectopic pregnancy, a whole bunch of reasons, most of which you're too short-sighted and dim-witted to enumerate here, and none of which are any of your fucking business. Because like getting an abscessed tooth removed, an abortion is a medical procedure, which is a decision between a patient and their doctor. And it's only religious zealots like you who think they have any business in choosing what anyone does with their body. Stop murdering our children. Your children? Bitch, last time you touched a breast, it was a bucket of KFC and ain't no men's village raising fucking children. There are no your children, you fucking weirdo. Who's the your that you're claiming here? Women are murdering men's children? Seriously? Someone show this guy the episode of Firefly where it's the whores versus the cowboys and I guarantee you he relates to the fucking cowboys. Some of you guys say, like, oh, because it's not out of the womb. We have... We, it's not born yet, so it doesn't count. That's my point. You guys believe in born people rights, not human rights. By definition, a human baby is someone who has been born. Either through cesarean section, vaginal birth, or teleportation, patent pending. Until it's born, it's a fucking fetus. It can't collect social security. You can't drive in the HOV lane with it. You can't claim it as a dependent. It can't apply for a SAG card. And God doesn't give two shits about it. In fact, if you're at war with God, he'll rip you the fuck open and throw your fetus on the rocks for a laugh. That, like, at least be honest about what you believe, right? You don't, you don't apply human rights to everything or everybody. Just like how back then the slaves, like, didn't get rights, and the white people only gave white people rights. Like, that was it. You guys are doing the exact same thing. Like, oh no, if you have to be born to have rights. That's ridiculous. That's actually ridiculous. You don't believe in human rights. To be serious for a minute, if we're arguing for human rights, what Jabroni Nostradamus is arguing for here is special rights for fetuses. Because if human beings all have the right to bodily autonomy, to the point where even as a corpse, if they're not an organ donor, people can't fuck with you and violate your bodily autonomy, even if someone desperately needs your kidney and would die without it. If you're not an organ donor, your bodily autonomy takes precedent over someone else's needs. But if you're a fetus, your bodily autonomy is more important than the person who's carrying you. So a fetus gets special rights that the rest of us don't have. Ergo, Jebediah Needledick here is arguing that a fetus should have more rights than a grown pregnant woman, and that pregnant woman is entitled to fewer rights than a corpse. And that's why I don't think you guys should be talking, <laughs> like you guys shouldn't be making arguments. They're not morally sound. There's no scientific basis for it. 
Here's another big difference between someone like me and someone like Jojo No-No here. He doesn't think we should be allowed to make arguments at all because they're both morally and scientifically unsound. Now, what science has to do with morals, I'm sure he has a whole thesis to provide us. And despite the fact that he's arguing against my right to talk, I believe he should have the right to spout whatever dipshit, asinine, opposite of clever bullshit comes to his tiny broke brain because it's this kind of anti-smart buffoonery that gives me plenty of content to play with and what would I do without it? Meanwhile, his thinly veiled fascism is only equaled by his blatantly stupid misogyny and I can only hope that whomever he sees as a potential mate in the future, he's dumb enough to show her this video or she's wise enough to discover it so that she'll run away screaming with her ovaries intact. As a scientist, scientist or science is speaking to you right now. No. It is child sacrifice that you are encouraging. Jesus fucking Christ on a cracker, dude. Really? Let me guess. You're the kind of guy who sends abortion torture porn to people and yeah, you're fucking gross. Gigolo Necklace here likes to envision babies clinging to life, desperate to struggle for the next breath while the cruel doctor crushes their skull with a fucking sledgehammer and leaves them to bleed out in the alley. While the truth of how an actual abortion is performed is quite mundane and medically normal, apart from the fucking whack jobs like this loser who think they have a say in what people do with their bodies. Stop murdering. Stop murdering. Stop murdering. Stop murdering. Stop murdering. Margaret Sanger, the, the founder of Planned Parenthood, she was a racist. I don't know shit about the founder of Planned Parenthood. I'm not going to take your word for it, and I'm not going to look it up. You know why? I don't care. Sir Isaac Newton was an alchemist. I'm a fan of the theory of gravity, not so much alchemy. Mozart was a fecal filiac. I'm a fan of the magic flute, but not shit play. And I don't know if you've heard about the founding fathers, but I have some bad news for you regarding their views on owning slaves. Ironically, that's one of the few parts of the Bible the Founding Fathers agreed with. So I don't give a fuck what the founder of Planned Parenthood did in her spare time. I'm just glad that the work she put in made it so that a person in a low-income neighborhood can get an affordable pap smear. Now, if you want to talk about people whose private lives become distractions to their public works, I have some very troubling news regarding a lot of religious leaders. Shall we compare those to Planned fucking Parenthood? I know that abortions kill black people disproportionately. My only response to this is I'm going to link in the description articles to people who have put it far better than I can why the black baby abortion trope is steeped in nothing but white supremacy. I'm not saying that Jumpin' Nightshade here is a white supremacist, but he's repeating white supremacist tropes and they come from such disgusting sources that I'm not even going to bother giving them the light of day on my channel other than to share the links that debunk them below. Christ, this nitwit is a pain in the ass, and it's really hard maintaining a buzz when you're trying to keep a mean drunk on while debunking the love child of Ray Romano and Kermit the Frog who was abandoned to be raised by nothing but 4chan memes and Andrew Tate who sealed your fate with triple K hate. You can't even debate alone with yourself on Chatterbait. Your twit stream is like your puberty. It came too late. Sorry, shit, man. <laughs> I lost control there for a minute. It's just this, this fucking guy. It's like he walks into the room and the diss track, it just just writes itself, you know? <laughs> okay, so you want to step to me. You think you got two fly feet? Well, you're going to need them when your kneecaps. Cut that out! Cut that out! Oh, well, if you don't want to have an abortion, then just don't have sex. It's like, yes, exactly. Okay, hot shot pop quiz. You're a 32 year old married woman who faithfully fucks her Christian husband because you've already got two kids and you're working on a third for the Lord because being fruitful and multiplying is just what God loving Christians want to do. But ruh row, that gosh darn embryo done planted itself in the Mrs. Fallopian tube instead of her uterus. Now, despite praying, fasting, throwing oil and dust on themselves and tearing their clothes and wearing their sackcloth, the only way Mrs. is gonna live is by terminating that pregnancy. Otherwise, she gonna die. If abortion ain't legal, well, we're just gonna have to give it up to Jesus and make do. And millions of women per year suffer this fate, but don't worry, because if the good Lord wanted abortion to be legal, we'd have been born with coat hangers. Am I right?
But wait, we ain't done, Slugger, because we got this poor dear soul here, ain't but 10 years old, got raped by her pappy through no fault of her own, and she's old enough to ovulate. But wouldn't you know it, her hips and her body ain't quite developed enough to the point where trying to deliver a child would be goddamn deadly and torturous. Not to mention, she'd be delivering her pappy's child, which, due to incest, I'm told, would likely turn into a spider and consume her upon birth. Now, without an abortion, she's likely to die either in childbirth or shortly thereafter due to the aforementioned spider consumption. There are literally millions of stories like that going on every day, and there are millions of more reasons why I can think a chin strap, milk toast, five head, neck beard, incel, grease ball ought to just keep a walking rather than off of their half formed grade school dropout, misinformed, half baked, 4 chan guided car theist, parking garage, bullshit opinion to they sales. I personally believe rape culture and abortion culture are connected. A rapist could have, it could rape somebody and then the baby gets aborted, rapist takes no responsibility for the baby. If a rapist's baby is aborted, the rapist can and should still go to prison, dipshit. I know you're stuck in the days of Deuteronomy 22 when the Sky Wizard declared that women were worth 50 shekels and had to marry their rapist, but us modern folk tend to respect things like bodily autonomy, you fucking ape. The American school system should include a curriculum on how to find a relationship with somebody, how to make friends, how to manage your anger how to fall in love how to deal with sadness that should be part of the american school curriculum that should be like a thing that we learn in school well that's interesting you're advocating for school counselors sex ed social studies empathy community all things that were voted against by republicans because you know that kind of gay sissy shit is too woke and is indoctrinating and transing our kids into the liberal mafia Maybe talk to your local representatives about this instead of voting in Board of Education members who strap on a Viking helmet when they take a tour of the Capitol. Stop hoe culture, stop abortion culture, and stop rape culture. You know, I'm all for stopping rape. Rape's no good. So how do we stop it? By outlawing abortion? Well, <laughs> again, I mentioned... The stars at night are big and bright! Big in the heart of Texas! <laughs> The rootinous, tootinous, rapinous state in the country. Yee-haw! <laughs> Outlawing abortion had the exact opposite effect on the amount of rape. Predictably so, because when you tell a population that no matter what, you can't get rid of your rapist's child, that incentivizes rape. We lower abortion rates by making sure that people who want to get pregnant can afford to and have the medical care and resources they need to provide for a child, while those who don't want to get pregnant have access to preventative care, and those who are ignorant about how pregnancy works have easy access to information so that they have no excuse to remain willfully ignorant about the basics of pregnancy and human biology. As for stopping hoe culture, why? It's the only way you're ever going to get laid, broski. Trust me. Someday you'll be grateful that you have the opportunity to pay for it because if anyone with a vagina sees you talking like this, their evolutionary biology is going to force their vagina to become drier than the Sahara. Don't sleep around until you have signed that legal document. That way you're not wasting everybody's time and damaging society and murdering your children. Look, man, there is nothing preventing you from getting a vasectomy and fucking every piece of consensual trim you can get your clammy little hands on with literally no fear of producing offspring. And the only damage to society I can think of would be it would generally lower the self-esteem of women in the U.S. if you were getting laid. But other than that, there is no net negative effect from people fucking other than the fact that it makes you jealous. I don't know. Just a crazy idea. Crazy idea. Dude, with a voice like that, don't purposely go from Ben Shapiro to Dog Whistle because your mother is going to need to replace all the china in her hutch again. And that beard? Well, 
I know you were going for Tony Stark meets Shabby Bedhead, but it looks more like your five head is overcompensating with the overgrown Forrest Gump leftovers from your middle school yearbook photo and you glued on whatever Ted Cruz sheds off in the morning after his nightly barbecue bender. Motherfucker over here looking like a werewolf mid-transformation, but got stuck mid-puberty because the witch that cursed him half-assed it. Bitch, your eyebrows and your chin strap are disastrous and your eyes look like a pederast at half mass. Keep away from schools and playgrounds. Your face is too punchable. Your jaw is unstable and your head is hateable. Your jawline is glass and your hairline incapable of staying. The set it shrinks because it can't keep up with the high-pitched shrieking Disney supervillain Ben Shapiro ordered off Wish dumbass bullshit voice that emerges from your four octave high glass shattering alpha male Chad wannabe incel brand of bullshit. I can't stand it anymore. You provoke this in me like the asshole who took the last ass whooping from William Wallace, the tallest and broadest, most dominating among us. You want to talk alpha motherfucker? You're witnessing all of it. Motherfucking cut dude's head off to prove a point. Look, bitch, you come near me. I don't give head. I take it. Rub it raw, lick it, strip it naked. And the side of you make me look at a whole country and take it. You looking like your weak ass wannabe alpha male bullshit is gonna feed me. Like an Alex Jones supplement pill, you too greasy. I'ma just bounce cause you look too needy. Don't make no more videos cause you look like a dried up bitch. You can't please me. This your favorite motherfucking bar, Korak the Bard. And bitch don't even try cause you can't ever be me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's just this guy. He's so dumb. He's so douchey and so unlikable. He just brings out this flow of consciousness in me. It's like, it, 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 it's like, it's like Donald Trump around a pussy. I, I just can't help myself. I just, I just have to, I just have to grab it and choke it and. Brrr.